Hey guys, it's Aubrey from eDrum Center here along with Brad, Eric, and Andy. Mm -hmm. And we're here to talk about the DWE kit. Let's um, get into it, right? Yeah, we've, we've had it for a couple weeks now um, and been playing on it, testing it out, figuring it all mm -hmm. out. And so we're going to let y'all know our opinions on it. So let's go. Yeah, who wants to go first? Um, I guess uh, I can start with the the finishes. Um, the kit comes in three different tiers, from uh, the lower price end to the higher end. Uh, the lower price, uh, it's like two Jura Cover wrap finishes, like a black galaxy, and then a white marine pearl. And then the uh, the mid tiers are a, it's a black cherry uh, lacquer, and then black a, cherry metallic. Yeah, that's right, a black cherry metallic lacquer finish and a midnight blue a lacquer finish. And then the the highest tier, the most expensive one, it's more of an exotic finish. It's like a um, black burst over like a curly maple wood finish. Also a lot. It almost looks flame maple in some of the pictures. Yeah. It's one of those things where every kit's probably going to be slightly different. It's like a black candy burst, I think. Yeah, but it's just supposed to be more of like an exotic outer uh, maple ply for the for the look. It's like the one we have is the. The blue metallic. Yeah, we've got the. And it looks good. It's really the good. midnight blue metallic in the video. It's really good. So, what makes this is really cool is you know this is the first kit that has wireless technology built into everything. Mm -hmm. So there's no wires mm -hmm. on the drums or the cymbals. They all hook up to the the computer you're using, uh, which is mandatory. You have to have the computer and their software which comes with it. Mm -hmm. You need a pretty powerful computer as well. Yes. Um, I think 16 gigs RAM is the minimum requirement. Yeah. And a is, halfway decent CPU. The one we have, is that 32? Yeah, D ours was. DW 32. sent us a, a, a MacBook Air to, to demo it with. It mm -hmm. has the software installed. I'm pretty sure it has 32, 32 gigs of RAM. I think that, that Air had 16. But it had um, a better... Uh, C, CPU. Like CPU than ours did. It's brand new. Yeah. I mean, they just bought it. It's yeah. one of their like M1, M2 chips, yes. silicon chips. But uh, yeah, we yeah. tested it actually on one of our Macs from 2020, which had the. It's one of the Intel CPUs. It yeah, Intel right I before I the M1 chip, mm -hmm. and it has 32 gigs of RAM, and it works. But it definitely works better with this newer computer. Yeah, it, for sure. it was definitely better once we got the laptop in from DW. It was. A big difference. Yeah. How much better it worked. Now I do have a question uh, that that would that a lot of people would have. Mm -hmm. Since it is wireless, battery in the drums. Yeah, there's batteries yeah. in there with battery indicators on the software. It's an actual battery compartment. You've like a double A, like in the symbols that I've seen. It's allegedly supposed to last <laughs> up to two years, if I remember. Yeah, right. depending no, on use. No, one of you say something to the effect of what Brad was saying that it doesn't really use any power until it's hit. Yes, so yeah. it's like a TV remote. It's kind of like a traditional, like uh, these new wireless keyboards and mice, <laughs> like they don't actively use power until you start typing or using them. And then once it detects the inactivity, it just stops. It's almost like turning off. Nice. So it helps really conserve that battery power. I also wanted to make a note that you don't have to use the DW Soundwork software. You can use like uh, Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, anything like that. Um, all of the things that you would normally find on a module for stuff like your editing parameters and sensitivity and threshold, that's all done through uh, an external uh, Drum Workshop software called the DWE Control, yeah. I think. Yeah, so there's only two apps on your phone or yeah. uh, your laptop two that you'll softwares. be able to open. And that's the one that you'll actually edit, uh, deep dive and edit in your, your sensitivity, your threshold, um, your, your crosstalk, um, edit MIDI notes, what correlates to what, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah. And it comes with all that stuff. When you, mm, yeah. when you buy a, it even when you buy just a shell pack, it comes with the softwares. It does. And the uh, little boxes you need to hook up to your computer. Which it only has, um, one thing to note about the box that connects to your computer, it only has a left and a right output on it. Mm -hmm. um, if you needed more, you need and a headphone out. And, and a headphone out, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't have a, a whole bunch of outputs on it like you would expect with a, like a, a module yeah, or something like, like a, a traditional. An external interface with mm -hmm. additional channels for that, for more. Or you can module, you can hook it up to like a TD50 module and That's use true. the outputs on it. Mm -hmm. As long as the module has USB, it should work as a MIDI device. Mm -hmm. That's not something we've tried, but we will. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's in the plans. 
Um, as far as like the plane goes. Have we talked about the shells yet? Uh, as far as the shells themselves go, they are um, specifically more of that collector's, uh, uh, I guess just overall quality of wood. Like the, the three, three, three. Yeah, they're maple uh, shells, shells, all the maple DW wood. shells, and it can be turned back into an acoustic kit. Mm -hmm. Which we're going to do a video on that as well. <clears throat> yes, that'll be a separate video. And it comes with heads. It comes with, yeah, it came with heads. Yep. It comes mm -hmm. with the mesh heads out of the box, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then it but comes then with the, the, the mylar heads. heads. Yeah. It comes with a package. snare strainer and all that too. So. Yeah. Obviously, the symbols can't be. Speaking, or, right, you know, right. Speaking <laughs> of the snare strainer, that, there yeah. is one cool feature on these kits where the uh, thing to turn your the snare on and off is on the drum, and it yeah, you just that's pretty flip cool. the throw off, and it goes to snare off, and then you flip it back, and it's snare on. So it's electronic, so you don't have to even have the snare. Yeah, on. it's it's mm -hmm. really cool. I actually really like that. It's very neat. That's something that yeah, most companies need to try to adopt. Yeah, it can't be that hard. It's little things like that they've tried to incorporate with this kit to make it feel, like seem more of like an acoustic kit. Like I was telling Andy earlier that uh, you can pitch bend the toms and snare just by like applying some pressure on the head and then striking it with your other hand with the stick and it'll kind of increase in pitch. I don't really know that much of a use for it, but it's just something that you can do uh, that they just kind of threw in there. I thought was pretty interesting. You can't really do that with the other e-kits unless using like like your your uh, hi hat control, like as that pitch bender or something. Uh, this kit just kind of does it through pressure and sensitivity. Same thing with like uh, the snare. It's much like the the Roland digital snare in, in that you apply pressure on the snare head with your hand, and that kind of activates the cross stick uh, sensor. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not something you can just kind of simply lay your hand on, I've found, unless there's like an adjustment for that that I can't find. You do have to apply a little bit of pressure with your hand, press down a little bit just to make sure it triggers. Who would you say this kit is for? It's not for everyone. Um, High-end enthusiasts or people that just want to ex experience that new technology. Um, and people that are, you know, pretty tech savvy. Not Maybe. plug and play. Yeah, it's n yeah. not for that plug and play. Uh, I mean, you gotta, first of all, you gotta have a good enough computer. You've gotta be able to download all the, the software packs. And if you don't have a really fast in internet connection, it will take a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, like any other VST, Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, there are gigs and gigs of high quality sound files here to be downloaded. Um, yeah, it took so. us a while to download it on, on our Macs. Mm -hmm. Luckily, the DW when they said that it was already yeah, downloaded. Yeah, it's it's pretty downloaded. Downloaded. But if you've never used a VST before, it's definitely a bit of a learning curve. If you have, if you've used, if you've used things like Superior Drummer and Easy Drummer, you'll probably find yourself at home with these. Much like those, there's like a built-in mixer, or you can apply effects like reverb and compression and EQ to individual channels. Uh, there are direct overhead and ambience mics for each instrument, which you know is pretty handy for you know someone who likes to do a lot of more high quality recording in a DAW. Did you say um, compression? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. compression, yeah, cool. EQ, reverb, okay. other effects. One of the biggest things to note, just when it comes to who it is, is for though, is to just kind of emphasize this is not for someone in an apartment. Um, yes. Yeah. The, it was the, louder than I thought it would be. The cymbals sure. are pretty loud. It's very loud. There's no um, rim guards on the uh, snare or toms, um, which we would have kind of liked just to quiet it down a little bit. But the the cymbals are very loud, and they're a higher frequency than like a typical e drum cymbal. So that alone makes it even sound louder, just because yeah. of how high I, frequency. The I actually is. downloaded one of those dB meters on my phone, mm -hmm. which I don't know how accurate it is, but I measured a Roland and F note and so on. They were around 85 dB. Mm -hmm. These, you know, that's where they kind of maxed out. These maxed out at about 109. Yeah. So it was a lot louder. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's and, a higher frequency too. Yeah. So definitely if, you know, part of e-drums is to be quiet. So if you're one of those people who's looking for an e-drum that is to take away from how loud the tr traditional acoustic kit is, this may not be the kit for you, but if mm -hmm. noise doesn't matter, like if you're playing live or you're in, you know, in a garage, it doesn't matter. The, 
that's not a that's a mute point anyways. And but they might get around to that too, mm -hmm. like more, more uh, you know research, research and development, or it's still very or, new technology. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the idea is just to get it out there and and mm -hmm. show the world that yes, you can make wireless drums, mm -hmm. and which is really cool. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. definitely really cool. But the uh, but there 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 might be some room room for improvement for just just to market it towards people who you know want a quieter drum kit mm -hmm. or or want an easier uh plug and play method for the future yeah you know we'll see where they go with that and one thing i was impressed with was um at least for me when playing on it i didn't experience any latency mm -hmm. um which was one of the things i was actually looking for immediately because i was like okay you got all these different symbols and toms going into one little box for a wireless thing how is that going to affect like the response of it and in my experience um, especially once we got the new laptop it was like I didn't notice it at all I felt like when I hit the sound was immediate and that, that's pretty impressive agreed yeah uh, yeah if there is any latency it's too fast for the for the human ear really mm -hmm. so I think it's uh, it is good to know that although the symbols could really be improved and aside from the drums not having rim guards I feel like the snare and toms, and especially the kick, just feel really good. The kick yeah. feels really, it's really great. Yeah. It's my favorite kick drum. Yeah, the, the, the kick drum kind of like a like a Kevlar looking kind of head. I don't know what kind of head that is, yeah, but it's, it's nice. woven. It's a traditional for sure. They collaborated with Remo just specifically for that. It feels good. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't feel too bouncy. You know, sometimes you can get a mesh head that that has a little too much bounce, and mm -hmm. and you have to do stuff to it, like either put pillows in it or. Hopefully, they sell that head by itself or. Just, yeah, yeah that a would series be really of those nice. heads. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it definitely is a little bit less of a, like a like a click like you get from like that the the Roland like KD two hundred or any of those. I don't know because that cushion's still kind of like a meshy material, but there's just there's like some sort of more higher pitched click <laughs> there when you hit it with a, a rubber or plastic beater versus yeah, almost um, like you're hitting plastic or something. It's right not that. it's not spongy either. And it's not too bouncy, so I I, I think it's somewhere in the it's it, it's pretty realistic. Mm -hmm. The heads feel good, uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, just like a, a V drum set or something. Well, they're just using rolling heads on the, mm -hmm. the yeah. toms and snare. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's just they, they feel they feel pretty good, pretty uh, familiar. But one the, one thing I, I did notice on that just on those heads thing, it, it seemed very uh, sensitive to head tension. Mm -hmm. So if your head was just yeah, like head that, yeah. slightly loosened up. Like one of the toms wasn't triggering right, and it, mm. like I went through and tweaked it just a little bit, and it just dialed it right back in. Oh, like a like a lug came. came yeah, loose. just lugs loosen up over time. Yeah, they yeah. do, yeah. And just kind of have to keep an eye on that. Get some Loctite. Yeah. It seemed more sensitive than say, the right one. Don't get another the of, of the brands we sell. <laughs> yeah. And one other, I like the uh, I guess major point I wanted to point out when it comes to who is this kit for is uh, the price point, like. This is oh, not. Yeah. This is not for an intro drummer or uh, mid tier either. I mean, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> yeah. I think the the cheapest shell pack alone, not including like symbols, any of the symbols is in the, the five thousand dollar range, right? Yeah. So I think for, it's a little more than that. Yeah. So for a full kit, you're expecting to spend you know close to that ten thousand dollar mark. You're basically buying a DW, like more or less just one of their collectors packs. I mean, if you're just getting the shell pack, you're. you're you know, you're, you're purchasing one of their, their high-end packs yeah. at that point. Mm -hmm. so, you get really nice hardware, too. Mm -hmm. You do get the nice hardware. Good. Yeah, the full package just come with the 5000 series hardware, yeah. kick pedal, hi-hat oh, stand. Oh, the kick pedal came with it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a There's nice options. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, you yeah. can just buy just the drums if you want. But oh, okay. Well, that is a nice package. kick pedal. I, I like the 5000 stuff, so, I mean, it, it feels really good. Well, this is our video. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. Hopefully you guys uh, liked this and enjoyed the content. Um, any questions on this, feel free to reach out, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Just leave some comments below Yeah, if you have any questions. We're going to do another video uh, on this in the future with just setting it up as an acoustic kit, giving it a shot, testing it out, showing everyone how uh, easy it is, how quick it is to get the electronics out, and how to put it back in. Yeah. A little overview of that. All right. Peace out, guys. Let's talk to you next Thanks, time. Thanks, guys. Bye.